What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about T-Rex, and specifically one of the most controversial theories to ever come out about the dinosaur. This isn't something new, by the way, and it actually dates all the way back to the Lost World as far as references go, and even back then, it was debated by people quite a bit in a fun way. So back in the 90s, when Jurassic Park was flying high as the highest grossing film of all time, Dr. Jack Horner, who actually helped the filmmakers bring the dinosaurs to life in the movie, put forward a theory that set the paleontological world on fire. And that theory would be that the king of the dinosaurs wasn't much of a tyrant after all, and that the animal may have actually been a scapegoat. Avenger. Now over the years, this kind of got a lot of attention, and in the second and third Jurassic Park movies, you can even see some cool references to it here and there. My favorite being from The Lost World, where the character of Dr. Robert Burke, who was actually modeled off of real-life paleontologist Robert Backer, who, by the way, also appeared in lots of Jurassic Park stuff at the time. I'll personally always remember him for being closely associated with Sega. Anyways, in the Lost World Jurassic Park, Dr. Burke is eaten and killed by the female Tyrannosaur after he and the gatherers run for cover in a waterfall. This character was made to look like the real-life Robert Backer as a favor from Dr. Horner to Spielberg because Dr. Backer believed the Rex to be a predatory animal. He thought it was a hunter. And Dr. Horner believed it to be, you know, a scavenger. So that's kind of how they designed some of the stuff in that movie, funnily enough. Horner made the T-Rex eat a Backer look-alike as a fun little jab but ironically, once Backer saw the movie, he loved it and he called up Jack Horner and said, see, I told you T-Rex was a hunter. Congratulations, you played yourself. Jurassic Park 3 is probably what made this theory the most infamous though, with the Rex only being featured in one scene during the entire film where it's eating something that's already dead before getting killed by the Spinosaurus in a really brief battle. Unfortunately, this would cause a new trend for the series where the king of the dinosaurs gets one-upped by other animals and has to kind of be the underdog in battles, which is something I want to go into specifically in this video. Tyrannosaurus rex had the strongest bite of any meat eater. Its forehead was four feet wide. I think when it comes to the Tyrannosaurus rex and its relationship to scavenging, as well as what kind of animal it really was in real life, we obviously will never know everything because paleontology changes its mind seemingly every few months with newer papers and research, which is one of the reasons why I've never really liked to go full blown deep into it on YouTube. I always kind of have a problem with people screaming at others that one thing is 100% factually accurate, only to change that info very soon after the fact and then act like a blowout that they previously had is totally okay and justified. It just seems wrong and not every paleontologist or science-based educators like this at all, but it's just not something. I get real tired of seeing stuff like that over and over again. It's also not a very good way to get people into dinosaurs. Normal people see that stuff and run for the hills because it looks whack as hell. Now, current science is kind of more in the direction of the T-Rex being an opportunist, which I think is normal of a lot of carnivorous animals and we all probably should have come to that conclusion a very long time ago. But when it comes to its scavenging behavior in the Jurassic Park in-universe jokes and references in the movies, I think just the fact that we have so many scenes of it hunting in these films more than balances out the full-blown scavenging idea. I mean, it hunts down a Gallimimus, it hunts down people, it fights and kills the Velociraptors in what could be argued to be a hunting scene if you go for the whole chaos butterfly effect theory where maybe the T-Rex actually was following and Grant, Lex, and Tim, after roaring at them by the fence, found the raptor going inside and then hunted that raptor down. Bit of a, you know, crazy theory, but it hunts stuff all the time in the movies. So for it to get referenced as a scavenging behavior here and there, that's kind of fine as far as I'm concerned. Which, by the way, I know that Jack Horner has gotten a lot of heat for the scavenging theory over the years, but it's important to recognize both paleontologists, you know, Dr. Backer and Dr. Horner, are kind of right here in retrospect. So it's not exactly as big of a deal as I think people make it out to be, which also goes back to my thoughts on how riled up the science community can get. Those are real life people we're talking about here, guys. These are human beings. Whereas these dinosaurs themselves 
and all their behavior has been dead for millions of years. So let's at least try to remember that when we talk about the stuff. Now, as far as the whole T-Rex wouldn't be able to take on a Spinosaurus sort of thing, or even the more recent Giganotosaurus encounters that went down in Dominion, when it comes to T-Rex, the way I personally look at the animal is all in relation to its bite force, which honestly probably came in handy a lot if it ever needed to eat anything that was already dead. Its massive, powerful jaws would just crush the bones and make short work of it with ease. But when it comes to all of the newer research and how dinosaur fans are supposed to treat the animal, I think it's way easier to just look at it like everything else in the dinosaur world. When you think of a stegosaurus, you think of the spikes at the end of its tail. When you think of an anki, you think of the club and armored back. When you think of a trike, it has a few horns and a frill on its head. These are all attributes used to help the animals survive in their own unique ways. Spinosaurus has a sail and was semi-aquatic. You know, these are what the dinosaurs have to aid them in life. But when it comes to T-Rex, I think people are always trying to look to the horizon of what would make the best headline and how they can do some kind of shocking claim to change what is effectively over a hundred year old legend in the dinosaur world. And one of the easiest ways of doing that is by having a bigger theropod fight and kill it. But just like all of those other dinosaurs, T-Rex has something going for it too. And it really is that gigantic bite force. I mean, Imagine the most slow and fat and overly characterized T-Rex you could possibly think of. Imagine all the theories of it not being able to grow 70% bigger like that new study suggested it could when it came out. And imagine if it would just, how it would be the definition of every critic's argument. You know, it couldn't run, it was so fat if it fell over it'd break its own leg. You're like, overly slow, overly built, it would die from just falling. You know what I'm talking about. You've heard these critiques before if you're a fan of paleontology. Now, imagine all of those arguments being true. Give it to them. Straight out. You're right. All your theories are objective truth. And still, if everything they said about the Tyrannosaurus Rex being weak in those regards was accurate, what would one well-placed bite from that thing do to a Giga or an Acrocanthosaurus or a Spinosaurus or literally anything it actually did live with 65 million years ago? From what we know about the bite force, what would happen to a rival animal? And that's why I think so many people still choose to defend T-Rex. And that's why I think the idea of it being solely a scavenger have always, it's always had pushback from people who, you know, are fans of the animal. And that's not just from a Jurassic Park fanboy like myself who loves seeing it do what it does best in blockbuster movies. The bite force of a T-Rex is its dinosaur superpower, just like a Triceratops horns or a Stegosaurus tail. That thing ate the herbivorous animals that it existed alongside. And we know that it even fought other Tyrannosaurs during its lifetime on the planet. So if the most powerful, biting, big king tyrant guy is off fighting other guys like himself, I don't care how fat or slow or goofy it may sound to people on the outside, it's going to take a ton of convincing for anyone to ever fully believe that a Spinosaurus or a Giga or whatever would outright roll the animal like what happens in Jurassic Park 3 when what little info that we do know of, and I want to stress that again, what tiny info we do have on it alone says that yeah, this thing was kind of a brutal beast in every way imaginable. I got a bowling movie for you, me kicking your ass. And honestly, if it was only a scavenger, what, what makes that so controversial is like, I get the bite force would be able to crush the bones and rip them and eat big chunks of flesh off of dead animals. Do you have any idea how many dead creatures T-Rex would just have to roll up on to survive? That thing is massive. There's no way it wasn't hunting down and killing things also, you know, conjoined with that. But in Jurassic Park 3, when they showed the animal already eating something dead before following after Dr. Grant and the others, I don't really think that's too hard to accept as far as opportunism or whatever you think is concerned. But if you were there back in the theater in 2001, you know that when the Rex bit down on the Spinosaurus neck, it was game over. It wasn't just like a little nibble. It forced 
the animal down to the ground with its jaws wrapped around its neck. It's over, bro. Especially, look, if you were someone that got super into dinosaurs after Jurassic Park and the Lost World came out, you had your copy of Dino Crisis, you had those little puppets of Aladar from the Disney movie, you recorded Walking with Dinosaurs after it aired on TV, on VHS. These are all things I did back in the day anyways. But uh, you were soaking up every bit of dinosaur information you could, and when you saw that Spinosaurus get back up, it was like, Oh, it's one of those movies. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that most people aren't paleontologists and most people aren't caught up on the most groundbreaking science that gets published and altered quickly in our modern era. And it's kind of hard to be, to be honest with you, but that doesn't mean that normal dinosaur fans like you or me or anyone else are stupid or ignorant of something very basic going on in a movie. And that also doesn't mean that anyone has to choose to make a big fuss about it because at the end of the day, these are movies where talking about here so yeah it's kind of an important detail to just keep in mind but this scavenging theory in my opinion one of the most controversial theories of a dinosaur ever actually of the tyrannosaurus rex was such an identifiable force within the dinosaur fan base back in the day that it even made its way into the jurassic park movies and eventually wound up going side by side with that spinosaurus battle in jp3 which is why i think it's become such a great piece of dinosaur science and trivia that helped shape the way we view everything today and why why it was so controversial at the time. But hey, those are all just my own thoughts on the subject matter. Again, from someone who is not a scientist, I don't want to be a scientist of any kind, but hey, what do all of you think? What are your own thoughts on the subject matter? Would you like to see a wimpy T-Rex get defeated by a Carcharodontosaurus in JP7? Or would you like to see something else? <laughs> it would be hilarious if they kept the T-Rex at the same size, but just let its bite force actually work this time around and have like a 70% bigger Spinosaurus try and fight it, only to have each little bite from the Rex like totally cripple or wound it massively until it just lost outright and gave up and died. Uh, I've talked a lot about that animal, you know, T-Rex. I think it's kind of obvious that it's my favorite. Hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions on this debate, dinosaurs or the animal itself happen to be, I'd love to hear all of them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely, and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.